Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to The Good Life with me, Eileen. We are here on Relationship Tuesday, and we're here to open your mind. I don't know who that is. That is Trumpet Black with his song, The Good Life. His album will be dropping this year. I'm so excited that they chose me and his family to continue his memory with The Good Life song. That's our theme song, y'all. The Good Life by Trumpet Black. I'm so excited about today's show. I'm excited kind of for different reasons because it's kind of a heavy topic and I really didn't know when I was kind of planning for the show, I didn't know what I was going to talk about today. But... I was inspired to have this conversation because, unfortunately, it's really not being had in the media, and I really don't know why. So let me give you a little bit of a background story. There is a young singer named Kesha, and Kesha has not worked in the past two years. So to tell you why, Kesha filed suit, and this was October 14th of 2014. Singer Kesha has filed suit in a civil court against her music producer, Dr. Luke, citing sex, sexual, physical, and verbal abuse over the course of 10 years. Kesha was in treatment for an eating disorder in January 2014, and at the time, Dr. Luke was rumored to be at the cause of her eating disorder. So Kesha and her mother, this is from sfgate.com, Kesha and her, her, her mentor, I should say, and producer have filed dueling lawsuits over the pop singer's claims that she was subjected to nearly a decade of sexual and emotional abuse. Kesha's lawsuit accuses hit maker producer Dr. Luke of raping her and subjecting her to other sexual and emotional abuse for nearly 10 years. The abuse led the TikTok singer, y'all heard that TikTok, well I'm not singing but y'all know what I'm talking about, to develop a severe eating disorder that required her to enter rehab earlier last year. Dr. Luke, 41, whose real name is Lucas Sebastian uh, Gottwald, filed a lawsuit against Kesha in New York calling the claims defamatory and saying that the singer is making them in an attempt to extort him and giving her a better rec- recording deal. And I want you to know that those that, that lawsuit was actually uh, um, pushed out of court. Um, Kesha's suit does not specifically does not specify when the alleged rape occurred, but her attorney wrote that the singer did report that the, the abuse to anyone out of fear of retaliation. And two, three days ago, Kesha's, she had her date in court. And so, from, let's see, from USmagazine.com, it goes on to say that the ruling for Sony was upheld. So, that means that she is going to be required to fulfill her contract with Sony And here's the clincher. Sony is only offering Dr. Luke as their producer. Of all of the other producers they had, they say, no, this is the only one that she can work with. So they have a lot of uh, different celebrities coming to her, you know, response. Lady Gaga is speaking out about it. Uh, Ariana Grande, Iggy Azalea, um, Kelly Clarkson, JoJo, uh, many, 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 many. No, JoJo ain't talking. (laughs) Jojo. Jojo? Yeah. Jojo. <laughs> As in Jodeci, um, Jojo. No. <laughs> oh, I, no, it's a female artist. Oh, I thought Jojo. you were talking about Jodeci. Like, <laughs> Lord from Oh, that stuff. You the... went through with Mary J. Blige. You... No, 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 no. <laughs> Glad we cleared that up. Yes, we cleared that up. Just for the record. <laughs> Just for the record. Um, and it, it, it's, it's really crazy because there are so many times where, you know, people are like, why don't women speak up? Why don't, you know, you say something? Well, this is an she instance, was money. or this gives you. Well, she hasn't made money for two years. She, she hasn't was been making. She was at that yeah. point, but she saw him. And I'm not excusing that. No, by no, no. The way. But and I, I'm, I'm reading yeah. from you know her. She saw him as a mentor. Yeah. You know who took advantage. Well, at some point, you she slept situation. with her mentor, and at some point, she decided not to anymore. No, no, no. She said uh, that she was drugged. Ten. If they have a ten year look, well, go ahead and finish, and then I'll, I'll come in. No, go ahead, give your thoughts. 
<coughs> Look, domestic abuse is uh, is not a it's not a small thing. So I have to be very careful what I say. Please. Um, <laughs> no, I'm saying that in advance that um, it's very serious. But a ten year relationship, producer, mentor, whatever. This obviously spent a lot of time together. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure, but I would suspect that uh, at some point it was a sexual relationship, and at some point she didn't want it to be a sexual relationship anymore. At what point the two overlapped, I don't know, but that's kind of like one of those situations. If that's the case, then that's why you don't have sexual relations in your windows, things like that with people you're in business with. You don't even start it. Okay, and that's one, <clears throat> that could be one point of view, but perspective that we don't know that that's the situation. What if the, the situation is that she's a young girl, because mm-hmm. obviously she was a, te- a young teenager when she came into the music industry, and well, she was being mentored by this producer. Right. First and foremost, um, anytime we have to deal with sexual assault or the violation of another individual, whether it be sexual, physical, or psychological, it, it brings us all to a point where I think we we have to engage in thoughts of our own vulnerabilities. And in reading the story, which um, I tell people all the time, I, I don't know what I don't know. So, yes, I was not aware of the depth of this process. I know there were always stories about her drug use or rehab or issues that may have come up. And right. We always tend, used to see like, oh, she has a party lifestyle. Right, Why is she right. still out the box? And and well, I tend not to we, get involved with those because to me, those are, you know, sensationalized stories about people's lives. And since they're not real characters in my life, I really don't care mm-hmm. just because I have enough going on in my own life right, to try to keep right. straight that I do not need to be trying to worry about what someone else can't keep straight. But I think this story and many other stories highlight the fact that we still live in a patriarchal society where powerful men, all too often they are white, or given passes for actions and transgressions that anybody else would be put under the jail for. Right. And I think the the multi, multiple things that are going on here, of yes, being an artist, yes, being a musician who has a very sexualized image, But also you're going up against the machine of Sony. And I think we've heard over the years Sony's ability to diminish the credibility of multiple artists and individuals Mm -hmm. through their power. Because this isn't the first time they've had this type of case. And not just this case, but it's all other cases that people have brought against a machine like Sony. And they've been able to squash it and just clearly say, nope, we're not dealing with you. But, 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 Brian, at what point? And I know, look, I know how things get rough, but at what point? Does Sony have a reputation like that? And you know who you are. And you sign with Sony. Right. You sign with Sony. Right. You could have been like, you knew, you knowing their reputation, so on and so forth. I'm not signing with Sony. Mm-hmm. Whoever thinks it's going to happen to them. No one ever thinks no it's going to happen to them. And, and that's, that's <clears throat> the point. As, as a young singer, so you've been thinking about it all your life. This is what I want to grow up to be. Sony gives you a contract. Who was you her know, manager? The same Luke, guy? Dr. Luke. Yeah, he was a manager, producer, producer, producer everything. He yeah. was yeah. over her. <clears throat> yeah. He was her mentor, but most times, well, I'm going to give you some some. Um, well, my dad was it. Let me finish. Statistics. Let me say one okay. thing. And I think what happens is specifically around sexual assault, violence against women, um, when it's perpetuated, we still have as, as a society do not want to address the real issues around sexual assault yes. and violence against women, and so. I don't have, and it's not always men against women. When women will sexually assault other yes, men, yes, both ways, or women. Um, it's not always a. I mean, actually, we know that the statistics are not that it's some guy in the bushes, right. you know, with a white van, no mm-hmm. windows, we you know, with a scully on. We know all too often it is just like this situation is being described as someone who was close to her, someone who had her confidence. Um, even as the two situations were described of him being able to give her something with her confidence, thinking he was taking care of her and her falling and succumbing to that. And in another situation where it was simply that she was, you know, given alcohol, another substance, I think we still don't want to deal with the fact that it is not okay to rape women. And and as the memes, as the stories, as the speaker said, it is not okay to tell girls not to dress to get raped. It is we have to tell boys and people who rape that it's not okay to rape. Right. So I, exactly. I, to me, that's that's I don't know what else I can say. Well, I'm going to give you some statistics. One out of every six American women has been the victim of an attempted or completed rape in her life team, lifetime. That's 14.8 percent completed rape and 2.8 percent attempted rape. 
that is 17.7 million American women have been victims of attempted or completed rape. Nine of every 10 rape victims were female. All women, a lifetime rate of rape, and these are attempted rape for women by race. All women is 17.6. White women is 17.7. Black women is 18.8. Asian Pacific Islander women are 6.8. American Indian Alaskan women is 34.1%. And mixed race women is 24.4%. Men, let me give you both sides. About 3% of American men or 1 in 33 men have experienced an attempted or completed rape in their lifetime. 1 in 33 men. Children, 15% of sexual assault and rape victims are under the age of 12. Y'all, what are we doing to protect our children? 29% are age 12 to 17, 44% are under age 18, 80% are under age 30, and 24 to 34-year-olds are the highest at risk. Those are the highest years of at risk. Girls age 16 to 19 are four times more likely than a general population to be victims of rape, attempted rape, or sexual assault. Let me repeat that. Girls ages 16 to 19 are more likely than the general population to be victims of rape, attempted rape, or sexual assault. 7% of girls in grades 5th to 8th and 12% of girls in grades 9 to 12 said that they have been sexually abused. 3% of the boys in grades 5 through 8 and 5% of boys in grades 9 to 12 said that they have been sexually abused. 82% of all juvenile victims are female. 82%. Y'all, what are we doing to protect our children? You know, I got to give you the statistics. So, like, we have a clear understanding. One in nine girls and one in 53 boys under the age of 18. Are raped. One in nine girls. You can go in a classroom and start picking out, you know, one through three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One in nine girls and one in 53 boys under the age of 18 are raped or experience sexual abuse or assault at the hands of an adult. In 1995, local child protection services agencies identified about 126,000 children who were vic- victims of either sustained or indicated sexual abuse. Of these, 75% were girls, nearly 30% of child victims were between the age of four and seven. Y'all, but here's another, here's another portion. We're going to go a little bit to campus and sexual violence because, you know, you get into that age where, you know, this is a time where, you know, we're, we're, I'm seeing all these parents with their with their uh, their acceptance letters on social media of their children who are going away to college. Let's have these conversations. Women 18 to 24 who are enrolled in college are three times more likely than women in general to suffer from sexual violence. Y'all want me to repeat that? Women 18 to 24 who are enrolled in college are three times more likely than women in general to suffer from sexual violence. Females of the same age who are not enrolled in college are four times more likely. Male college age students are 78% more likely than non-students to be victim of rape or sexual assault. Female college age students are 20% less likely than non-students to be a victim of rape or sexual assault. Only 20% of female student survivors age 18 to 24 report to law enforcement. In comparison, 33% of female non-student survivors age 18 to 24 report to law enforcement. 72% of campus law enforcement agencies have a staff member responsible for survivor response and assistance because it's that necessary. And 8% of all sexual assaults occur while victim is attending school. I know y'all are hearing these numbers roll off my tongue, but it's just like at some point we have to open our minds to living differently in the world and acknowledge that this is a problem. Start having real conversations with our children, male and female alike. And we need to start really knowing that no means no. We're going to get into this conversation when we get back. This is a good life, y'all. Open your mind.
Do you know anyone with less than perfect credit? At KB Enterprises, they specialize in restoring your score. Learn how to increase your credit score with 100% satisfaction guarantee. A-plus rating with the BBB, 10-year track record of removing negative items, including repossessions, foreclosures, bankruptcies, tax liens, student loans, and more. Kenneth Barnes and his team at KB Enterprises are excited about helping you restore your credit and achieving your financial goals. Whether it's acquiring a home or purchasing a car, don't miss this opportunity to change your life forever. For more info, give them a call at 504-577-4139. Log on to www.kennethbarnes.org and be sure to tune into The Good Life on Money Mondays and get your financial tips for the week from Kenneth Barnes so you can live the good life too. Carter Business Development delivers. For businesses to compete, they must have access. Let CBD be your bridge for business development services, radio advertising, social media marketing, brand ambassador, outreach, and access. Contact Carter Business Development at 504-400-7127 or email Eileen at TGLRadioShow.com. Carter Business Development creates unfolding opportunities. CBD connects the dots from where you are to where you want to be. Join the good life now with Carter Business Development, 504-400-7127, 504-400-7127. As quoted, a man who stops advertising to save money is like a man who stops a clock to save time. Let CBD save you time and give you access. Call 504-400-7127, 504-400-7127. Take the steps required for access so you can live the good life, too, with Carter Business Development. That's 504-400-7127. This celebrated moment in black history is sponsored by Dr. Dwight McKenna. George McKenna was a professor at Xavier University for 50 years, and Leah McKenna was an educator and principal at Rivers Frederick Junior High School in New Orleans. The McKennas were responsible for educating thousands of black children in New Orleans over their careers. Their son, Dr. Dwight McKenna, honored his parents' memory by naming his African-American museum after them, the George and Leah McKenna Museum of African-American Art. Visit the George and Leah McKenna Museum at 2003 Carondelet Street and experience a visual representation of their talent. This celebrated moment in black history is sponsored by Dr. Dwight McKenna. As a business owner, do you ever wonder how you can gain better exposure to potential clients, not only locally but around the world? The Internet has changed the game for everybody, and whether you're a small mom-and-pop shop, a medium-sized business, or non-profit, it's important that you have a web presence online. We at Peak Mountain Technology Solutions understand that growing your business means more to you than most people realize. That's why we've taken it upon ourselves to offer the very best in website design. We're talking customers custom-built websites that are professionally designed with your business in mind. Websites that are designed to help attract customers to your business. So if you're ready to take your business to the next level, give Peak Mountain Technology Solutions a call today to see how we can help. In addition to website design, we offer a full range of information technology support. So give us a call today at 504-355-8400. Again, that's 504-355-8400. Gentilly Italian Pies, home to the $5 Family Happy Hour. Specials on pizza, wings, and drinks, Tuesday through Thursday, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Gentilly Italian Pie does fresh for the entire family. Salads, pizza, pasta, wings, and oven-baked sandwiches. Gentilly Italian Pie offers lunch and dinner in a new, modern atmosphere surrounded by big-screen TVs. Dine-in or carry-out by calling 504-826-9180. That's 504-826-9180. Relax. Have a drink from the fully stocked bar or beer on tap while your order is made from the freshest ingredients. Gentilly Italian Pie, 4706 Paris Avenue, is home where everybody knows your name. So bring the family to Paris and Maribou for the $5 Family Happy Hour, Tuesday through Thursday, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. That's Gentilly Italian Pie. Dine in or carry out, 504-826-9180. That's 504-826-9180. You gotta try the pie. That's the original Italian pie, located at Paris and Maribou in Gentilly. 
back on the air. Let's go to the phones. Call her. Let me help you. Hi. Um. So I've been trying to get my landlord to fix my washing machine for weeks, but he keeps avoiding me. What do I do? Excellent question. Well, have you been to AT and T? Uh. Why is my landlord there? No, but when you have AT and T Wireless and Direct TV, you can get unlimited data. Sounds great, but how will that fix my washer? Well, it won't. But now that AT and T and Direct TV have joined forces, you can enjoy your favorite Direct TV shows on your phone while you're counting quarters at the local laundromat. Sweet. <laughs> Sweet indeed. AT and T, mobilizing your world. Come into AT and T now and get the Samsung Galaxy S6. Must have eligible TV service. If you're not eligible, AT&T will move you to a new plan, and overage charges may apply. After 22 gigabytes of data usage, AT&T may reduce speeds. TV content varies by device, location, and package. Monthly and other charges, usage, and other restrictions apply. See store for plan details. LNR Security provides the good life. They make their mark in the security arena by providing excellent security services for more than 35 years, and are licensed in more than 13 states. LNR Security's team comes with a wealth of experience from the military, law enforcement, and law enforcement training. Their personnel is comprised of more than 200 employees trained in video monitoring, special event services, convention services, armed and unarmed security guards, ticket takers, executive security, personal bodyguards, hall monitors, and critical infrastructure personnel that are TSA trained. LNR Security services are provided on a 24-hour basis and have expanded to the newest technology, including video monitoring. Find them. On the web at www.lrsecurity.com, or call them today at 504-943-3191. Again, that number is 504-943-3191. Live the good life with LNR Security today. WBOK 12:30 a.m. The People's Station. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to the Good Life with me, Eileen. We are here on Relationship Tuesday, and we're here to open your mind. We are here on Relationship Tuesday, and we're talking about a topic that sometimes, you know, people like to. Kind of tiptoe around because sometimes it's hard to have, but you know that's what the good life is all about. We're opening people's minds to living differently in the world, and this article or this conversation has re- really fallen, you know, heavy on my heart. And I really wanted to have it because it wasn't being had. And once I heard about it, I was like, Why aren't we talking about this? Why isn't this on every major news channel? Why Why are we only hearing about it now? So on CambierNews.com. They go on to say, "Where is Kesha? Weren't we all familiar with the name only a couple years ago? Why haven't? Why have we forgotten her now?" Well, in, in September of last year, Kesha's rape case came to light. A super hit recording artist filed a case against her producer and mentor Lucas Gottwald, aka Dr. Luke, to be freed from a contract with his company. The singer accused the producer for physically, sexually, emotionally, and verbally abusing her for the years that they were working together. She also claims that the producer put her life at risk several times. As strange as it is, not many have even heard of Kesha's rape case. We fail to understand why did the story not get much attention from the mainstream media, as both the accused and the accuser are very well-known people. Dr. Luke filed a countersuit against the star, claiming that she is defaming him and is involved in the breach of contract. You know, many claim that one of the many reasons behind the incident getting no media coverage is that Dr. Luke is an influential man behind 37 top 10 singles. Y'all heard that? 37. Bill, Bill Cosby was influential. Why they Why they went after him? Yeah. What's the difference between him and Dr. Luke? Which is why we're having all of these conversations. We're opening people's mind. His successes include, you know, Katy Perry, Miley Cyrus. Party in the USA, Wrecking Ball, and many of Britney Spears' massive hits. He's also the writer and producer of the most popular of Kesha songs like TikTok and 
we are who we are. So just to give you a little background of exactly, yeah, you know, how know big who this is. producer is. Well, I mean, I, I know who she is, and is she, I've, you know, had right her song. She's she's white. I'll show you a picture. She, if you look on um, the Good Life Radio Show, I have her picture and a little bit of blurb about what's going on. And, you know, we were talking uh, about, you know, I kind of wanted to get into why people don't speak up or, you know, what are some of these uh some of the, you know, the reportings and the statistics regarding that. And I'm getting these statistics from Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network. Right. That's RAIN, RAIN.org, R-A-I-N-N.org. That's where I'm getting these statistics. Reporting cases. Sexual assault is one of the most underreported crimes with 68% still being left unreported. The majority of sexual assault are not reported to the police. An average of 68% of assaults in the last five years were not reported. Those rapists, of course, will never spend a day in prison. But even when the crime is reported, it is unlikely to lead to an arrest and prosecution. Factoring in unreported rapes, only about 2% of rapists will ever serve a day in prison. And, and that's the problem right there. If that's men, the problem if right there. If men know that you were, if, 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 if you were going to do time, you say most men, mo- most men, most people don't see a day well, we'll in jail. Well, say men and women because, you know, it's both ways. But <clears throat> they say most people don't see a day in jail. Men. Most people don't see a day in court. Exactly. So when you know, <laughs> when you know what the, what the, in your responsibility is, what the consequences are, which are nothing, then what's the, what's going to stop you from doing it? And that's, and that's exactly the point. And that's exactly why, you know, people are like, why do they wait? Why don't they say anything? Well, I'm not saying this is entirely the, the reason, the, but this is one of those reasons. The only, the only, and I wanted to ask this question because you know, um, the the sexual <laughs> abuse, physical abuse, yeah, <coughs> that's very serious. And I'm not trying to downplay the other one like it's serious, but mm-hmm. in a business setting, what would you call a drill instructor in the Army, Navy, Air Force? You wouldn't call Sir. them very abusive. Yeah, you wouldn't call them verbally yeah. abusive. Definitely. But they're doing it to motivate you. For um, for training response, I'm not in the military, right. so I don't know. But so this it, is just motivating <clears throat> you to. No, I'm talking about the verbal as as far as in a business mentor arrangement. The ver- I'm I'm separating the verbal from everything else. Right, but someone who generally has this as their ultimate gain is generally breaking you down. Yeah, emotionally, no doubt. verbally, physically, yeah, and all I these think. other things before they they but, get. But to that's that. like a person in the military saying, "My uh, well, not I don't want to." combine these two mm-hmm. but it what would happen if a person in the military came forward and was like i'm filing charges against my drill well, instructor well actually bro that's probably one of the worst places to ever be assaulted of any way because unfortunately that that's i think speaks right to the point of that when we create systems where we protect people who can manipulate and pervert yeah. the protection of people who are in vulnerable positions then us on our side have a hard time of saying that was wrong because it's like, well, you chose to. Like, you signed up for that. You you asked for that. And I think that's where we have to create some credibility about things. So actually, one of the big things is in the military, and I don't know if y'all were paying attention the last couple of years or if it even registered because we all have different folk out, but the military was going through this big yes. debate about yes. removing any type of – um legal action for sexual assault violence against women from the military. They wanted to take it to civilian um, overseeing courts. And the military said no, and they've been, they don't have to do it. So that's kind of one of the things that happened. Like, you got women being sexually assaulted and raped mm-hmm. in Iraq when they're supposed to be there for combat to support our troops. And then they don't, I mean, that's some of the cases that happened. Women killed themselves. They were killed because they were sexually assaulted. And and all of these things happen, and there's no place for a victim to go mm-hmm. to be heard and even just be protected. So, once again, rape is about power. It's not about sex. Right. It's about manipulation. Exactly. It's about, it is about the forceful, overwhelming, overbearing presence that you can put on someone that you have now either made vulnerable and underwhelming or you've made found someone who just can't handle it. So when we have that conversation, it it becomes more fruitful to say, why is it that we have a society where people are allowed to rape? And so even when, when I've had conversations and, you know, people have tried to say, well, it wasn't that long ago that if you were 30, you could marry a woman at 15 or 13, you could take a bride. I was like, well, if we're honest, you still didn't take a bride though. You were raping. 
Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so if you wanted her to be your bride, you would have said, okay, well, the legal construction, the social construction of where we live is that you have to wait until this person is of age to marry them. That's what you would have done then. You would have said, I love you so much that I'm not willing to encounter jail or eat legal right. issues. But or, put, or moral issues. Or to emotionally, you know, subject you mm-hmm. to that. Because you're not emotionally, physically, psycholo- psycho- psychologically, psych- I can't even get it out. Psychologically <laughs> ready for mm-hmm. that type of relationship. And I love you so much. I'm gonna wait until you right. you are ready. Right. I hate to say this. I, I laugh because my interest spans so much. But I remember in the movie Belly when DMX was dealing with the young <laughs> chick, and it was just kind of odd because yeah, you know he. Was- yeah, he was like, no, you're not old enough to have uh-huh. sex with me. And she was like, but I could do this. And she was performing another sexual act on him. And he was like, yeah. And it was even weird because, like, even in that moment, I was like, wow. I was like, DMX in this movie is actually saying you shouldn't be having sex with somebody under age. Right. Like, even at this point, he's killing people. that was years ago. Right, right. Imagine if, <laughs> imagine if that were, you know, a conversation that we had with everyone well, imagine me, if, if this was you know look for me just during the, a conversation that is go no, ahead. No, no, during the break we were talking it's like look i'm 42 years old they got they got younger chicks that that come on to me all the time like i tell my friends it's open conversation and it's known it's like look you're too young it's too you're too young i got a daughter your age you know and it's like it's is is for me it's morally unacceptable mm-hmm and you know, and then second of all, it's like on a on a on a on a petty note, it's like I don't want to get the dirty old man charged. You know, it's like, <laughs> but you know what? If that's the things that it takes for me mm-hmm. to see that, then so be it. But mm-hmm. I make it. I'm very verbal about yeah. it in and, my in my yeah. group of friends to be like. And it doesn't matter how you get there, as long as you come to the right conclusion. Kind of like how we deal with this comic core versus real mad stuff. Mm-hmm. I want the right answer. So right. use use whatever process you get, but give me the right answer. Let me see your work. But I, but I think that's a, a big part of it is that, once again, what are we telling young men and women about sex and intimacy? You know, we, we have songs. We have movies. We have people who make um, the practice of manipulating people the goal of their lives. Oh, well, let me give you a little bit of statistics on that. Um, and this also comes from, again, Rape, Abuse, Incest National Network, RAIN.org. Uh, and I'm going to give you uh, some statistics about the offenders. Approximately four out of five rapes were committed by someone known to the victim. 82% of sexual assaults were perpetrated by a non-stranger. 47% of rapists are a friend or acquaintance. 25% are intimate. Five percent are a relative. And I want to say, you know, 25 percent are intimate because a lot of people are like, you can't be raped by your husband. Hmm. You can't be Jeez. raped by your wife. Yeah, man, men can be raped, be raped by that woman, too. Now. By your boyfriend. Exactly. I said can't be raped by your wife. Or you can't be raped by your boyfriend. You can't be raped by your girlfriend. Yes, you can. You can I, you be know, raped you, by you, your you know significant what? You know other. What? I don't understand. It's like. For me, it's like these people that go out on these African hunting safaris, and they know they know There's where the animals are going to be. No, they know where they know where uh-huh. the animal's going to be, and they have this high power rifle with the scope and everything, and they kill this animal, and it's like they feel like they really did something. It's like for a woman to be coherent, know what's going on, knows what she received, everything. That's the pleasure of it. So anything outside of that is like is mind boggling to me. It's like Dude is like she didn't she she doesn't but, know what's going on. She doesn't but, have the power to say no, no nothing. It's like what what's going on in your mind? We but that goes back to where it, it's it's the power play, bro. It, it it goes back to where when I when I mean and and I, I lean so so you know kind of the reality is working in a college counseling center and being a clinician. Oftentimes I've had to deal with this front and center, you know, at one in the morning. Getting a and phone and I, call. I do want to uh, say that as well. Dr. Turner is a is a professor at Xavier University. So you you see this first. Well, not not so much at Xavier, but previously I was in the okay. counseling center. And so, I mean, I, I do see it at Xavier, but I'm, I'm going to speak to the clinical piece. Please. Thank it you. is very different to get that call at one in the morning as a clinician. And you think it's a mental health issue. And I've gotten to campus and I'm sitting in my office and the police come in. I'm like, well, why are the police here? And there's a young lady that comes in and she's been raped. Oh, and wow. then the issue becomes 
she doesn't want to talk about it. Mm-hmm. But she's clearly distraught, emotionally drained. Clearly. clearly but, and it's like, well, what can I Something do? Something happened. Right. <laughs> and as a man, I even feel weaker because in that moment, I don't want to victimize her again to make her talk. Right. Because if I force myself upon her again, no, you're going to talk about it. It's your power. Not, it's not, power. not here it go. I, not here it is. Here's from another an, man. From an authority. Right. That's the, and that's right. the main thing is, you know, when you talk about children, you talk about military, you talk about these things, it's people in an authoritative yep. position doing it. And they're already looking at them in that position. Right. Exactly. And um, we're going to take a quick break. This is a very interesting conversation. Yeah, and I'm going to give you some, some, specific, some statistics on who those criminals are. This is The Good Life, Relationship Tuesday. We're, dis- we're discussing sexual as- assault. We'll be right back. Are you looking for a better way to get fit? Bored with the same old routines? Looking for results or a way to instill discipline in the kids? Tiger Rock Martial Arts is the answer with Taekwondo, kickboxing, and self-defense classes. Tiger Rock diversifies your training in ways that allows individuals of all ages and fitness levels to feel like a champion. Join Tiger Rock today, TigerRockNola.com or 504-455-9694. That's 504-455-9694. With a three-class starter pack, starting for only $38, which includes your training uniform. Learn, grow, and succeed with Tiger Rock's three convenient locations, Old Metairie, West Bank, and Clearview. There's no better time to start gaining strength, skills, and protection for life than now. 504-455-9694. 504-455-9694. 504-455-9694. See you on the mat. Getting a speeding ticket can impact drivers in many ways for multiple years. When you receive a traffic ticket, in addition to the fines you may have to pay, you may have to miss work to attend court, and in many cases, your insurance rates may increase as a result of one single ticket. Before you decide to just pay your traffic ticket and get it over with, Speak to an attorney. In most instances, when you hire an attorney, he or she can stand in for you at court and you do not have to attend. Also, lawyers are trained and experienced in navigating the legal system, which could mean the difference between a blemished or clean driving record. If you have the unfortunate experience of receiving a traffic ticket, consult an attorney who will provide you with advice that is specific to your situation. This was your legal line of the day, brought to you by the Hilliard Law Firm. For more information, call 504-729-6133. Gentilly Italian Pies, home to the $5 Family Happy Hour. Specials on pizza, wings, and drinks, Tuesday through Thursday, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Gentilly Italian Pie does fresh for the entire family. Salads, pizza, pasta, wings, and oven-baked sandwiches. Gentilly Italian Pie offers lunch and dinner in a new, modern atmosphere surrounded by big-screen TVs. Dine in or carry out by calling 504-826-9180. That's 504-826-9180. Relax, have a drink from the fully stocked bar or beer on tap while your order is made from the freshest ingredients. Gentilly Italian Pie, 4706 Paris Avenue. It's home where everybody knows your name. So bring the family to Paris and Maribou for the $5 Family Happy Hour, Tuesday through Thursday, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. That's Gentilly Italian Pie. Dine in or carry out, 504-826-9180. That's 504-826-9180. You gotta try the pie. That's the original Italian pie, located at Paris and Mirabu in Gentilly. LNR Security provides the good life. They make their mark in the security arena by providing excellent security services for more than 35 years and are licensed in more than 13 states. LNR Security's team comes with a wealth of experience from the military, law enforcement, and law enforcement training. Their personnel is comprised of more than 200 employees trained in video monitoring, special event services, convention services, armed and unarmed security guards, ticket takers, executive security, personal bodyguards, hall monitors, and critical infrastructure personnel that are TSA trained. LNR security services are provided on a 24-hour basis and have expanded to the newest technology, including video monitoring. Find them on the web at www.lrsecurity.com or call them today at 504-943-3191. Again, that number is 504-943-3191. Live the good life with LNR security today. 
Back on the air. Let's go to the phones. Caller, let me help you. Hi. Um. So I've been trying to get my landlord to fix my washing machine for weeks, but he keeps avoiding me. What do I do? Excellent question. Well, have you been to AT and T? Uh. Why is my landlord there? No, but when you have AT and T Wireless and Direct TV, you can get unlimited data. Sounds great. But how will that fix my washer? Well, it won't. But now that AT and T and Direct TV have joined forces, you can enjoy your favorite Direct TV shows on your phone while you're counting quarters at the local laundromat. Sweet. <laughs> Sweet indeed. AT and T, mobilizing your world. Come into AT and T now and get the Samsung Galaxy S6. Must have eligible TV service. If you're not eligible, AT&T will move you to a new plan, and overage charges may apply. After 22 gigabytes of data usage, AT&T may reduce speeds. TV content varies by device, location, and package. Monthly and other charges, usage, and other restrictions apply. See store for plan details. Do you still smoke? Does your doctor say you should quit? You know you should, but you just can't. You may have tried before and think it's too hard or too expensive, and you're not alone. At Auctioner, we can help. We're offering a free comprehensive program, a risk-free way to stop smoking. If you're a Louisiana resident who has been smoking since before September 1st, 1988, you're eligible for free over-the-counter and prescription medications. Plus, free office visits with a certified smoking cessation counselor and group counseling sessions, and you don't even have to stop smoking before you come in. At your first visit, we'll discuss your options and best treatment plan. To sign up and learn more about the Auctioner Smoking Cessation Clinic or find a convenient location, go to auctioner.org/quit. WBOK 12:30 a.m. The People's Station. Good night, yeah. Good night, yeah. Good night, yeah. Good night, yeah. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome back to The Good Life with me, Eileen. We are here on Relationship Tuesday, and we're here to open your mind. We, he, we are here on the Good Life radio show on Relationship Tuesday discussing a topic that I felt just wasn't getting enough attention. There is a um, famous pop star named Kesha. She's been out of the media for the past two years because she has refused to work with her producer, a.k.a. Dr. Luke, because of sexual abuse, physical, emotional, um, psychological. And she had a court case uh, and... Uh, a couple days ago, at the end of last week, she was denied a request to break her contract with Sony Records and um, her producer, Dr. Luke, who she claims has sexually abused her. Um, they have a lot of uh, celebrities that's come to her aid and her support. Taylor Swift has actually donated $250,000 to show support to Kesha because she hasn't been able to work for two years to take care of her legal um, her legal battle. So we wanted to really have this conversation because, number one, I don't know why it hasn't been getting, like, national attention. And it's funny, I was looking at CNN this morning, and y'all know I watch CNN all the time, so I would have heard about this. But today... It popped up on the news, and today is when Dr. Luke is speaking publicly, saying that he's denying it. So that's when it gets public attention, when he starts saying mm. that that it didn't happen? Well, I think that's very well, interesting. Well, I, but just like the bill, well, I'm not even going to bring bill. Yeah, let's, let's it, stick to one. How many accusations have been brought forth against this person? I don't know specifically, but he's I can He's produced all these things, right? Yes. He's he's produced all these things, so you have to have something in a business. You know, it's, it would be just like somebody at um, at a school, for instance, and you have this. What was the school? Penn State. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you have this tenured professor, coach, mm-hmm. whatever, mm-hmm. and you know, at what point? Well, at one point, you have nothing. Then you have these the history of it. 
Mm-hmm. So does he have that history of it? And but is it an internal history or is it a public history? Mm-hmm. Because lots of times it's an internal history and people around you know well, they just don't years, say anything. Somebody else come they forward? don't want the one. They don't want to be the one attacked. Who wants to be attacked by and, Sony? And, and guess what? I'm not saying is his. Is this a history? Because that doesn't mean anything. Because you could have just had other women that's like, look, I'm about to get this contract. Go ahead, do what you got to do. So I'm not trying to compare the two because. The difference between coming forward and being willing is two different things. Exactly. But what what compels you to come forward when you see everything that she's gone through? Ex- exactly. exactly. What compels you to go forward <laughs> when you when see, you see everything, everything that she's been through afterwards? And I, and I think one of the one of the big pieces um, when we talk about serial rapists or manipulators is oftentimes they're so aware of what they're doing that they cover their tracks. So it does become yep. really, really interesting to think, well, one, he is a good guy. He's this great producer. Mm-hmm. So how many he's going to further my career. Right. And, so how many times do I want to question what may have happened? And well, so, you know what? I want you to hold that thought because okay. I'm going to give you some uh, statistics from Rain regarding criminals, and then I'm going to let you speak to that. So here are some statistics re- Regarding the perpetrator, the average age of a rapist is 31 years old. 52% of rapists are white. 22% of imprisoned rapists report that they are married. Juveniles accounted for 16% of forcible rape arrest. And 17% of those arrested were arrested for other sexual offenses as well. One in three sexual assaults, the perpetrator was intoxicated 30% 30% with alcohol, 4% with drugs. In 2001, 11% of rapes involved the use of a weapon, 3% a use of a gun, 6% a use of a knife, and 2% used another form of weapon. 80, a lie. 84, a lie, yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. 84% of victims reported the use of physical force on, only. Rapists are more likely to be a serial criminal than a serial rapist. 46% of rapists who were released from prison were arrested within three years of their release for another crime. 18.6 for a violent offense, 14.8 for property offense, 11.2 for a drug offense, and 20.5 for a public order offense. Which I think goes to your point, Brian, that it's a power mm-hmm. Uh, it's a, it's it's, it's a, a control crime. of it's a power crime, and I I think I mean it, I, I I'm just to be honest as time moves I mean this is probably one of the most significant areas where I know I get emotionally charged and and honestly I, I've been I felt weak in therapy when when I've had to work with clients who've been raped or sexually assaulted because all too often it is usually a victim of knowing it's someone you know it's someone you're close to someone mm-hmm. that's entrusted. Um, and I think if we they don't say 47 percent of rapists are friend or acquaintance, that's friend or acquaintance. But right. then we don't even get into the family. Exactly. So, so then if it is an uncle, a cousin, um, you know, and, and, and to how be, much harder is it to have those conversations? And then to be honest, if we look at what's going on right now in New Orleans, we've had a huge string of sexual assaults and rapes in our city because it's another crime of power that young men and women are using. Because they're feeling powerless. Well, here's a statistic that goes to that. 82% of sexual mm-hmm. assaults were perpetrated by a non-stranger. Y'all mm-hmm. hear that? 82. 82%. Yeah. Y'all need to have conversations with the children mm-hmm. around y'all. And one of the things. Have these conversations. Open your mind. So have these conversations. If a child is real. acting a little bit different, you never know. Just have the conversation. And let's be real. As we sit around this table, this is one of the issues that the African-American community continues to um, shy away from. Mm-hmm. We don't prepare our kids, our children for understanding. Like we, we can joke about stranger danger, but the reality of it is we need to tell our kids what's okay, what's not okay. We need to let them know because one of the things you constantly hear is that, um, well, they said that if I told anybody, they would hurt my family. They would do this. And my thing is, they're going to keep hurting you. So no, you tell me and we'll deal with that fight together. We'll fight them right. together. But, but the, that's the other biggest thing is, what anybody thinks is, will they believe me? Mm-hmm. Mm. And that's the replay and Thank the replay. You. And that's the worst replay with anything in life is, will they believe me when you mm-hmm. know something to be true? You know, it's it's like the it's like the kid who 
steals money out of his mom's purse, for instance, mm-hmm. uh-huh. you know, and he goes to school and he's get got caught for stealing. It's like, but he really wasn't <laughs> stealing. No, you see what I'm saying? Right, but right. he really didn't steal at school, but he can't go home and tell his mom that because she's going to be like, look, you steal. Right. I don't believe you. So I, I, I tried to transition to that because of the seriousness of yeah. what we're talking about, but mm-hmm. it's really that serious that people are really like, I won't be believed. Right. right. And 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 I tried to make that analogy to say even at a small level like that how bad it feels to not be mm-hmm. believed. Put it on a major scale now. Exactly. And to say that somebody won't believe you and you're exactly. you're enduring this you're, right. how many times a day do these people go through this? Right. What happened? Playing it out. Right. What did I do wrong? Could I have prevented it? What could have happened if I would have tied my shoes 10 minutes earlier would this have happened? There's so many things that happen. Right. Imagine but to trying also to be productive compound, in your day dealing with it. You can't. Well, and and that's where, and this is where I think we, we, we come to a point of why this becomes important in relationships, is that you have to get help. And, and it's not something that can, can change Real help. overnight. It's not something that you just, just can throw away with alcohol or drugs. And you can't use another person's strength. It, you have to rebuild yourself. You have to really, really work on refocusing on who you are. So... If there's any listener, anybody who's ever been sexually assaulted or raped and they're still dealing with it, you got to get help. And that help can come in many different forms, but there's agencies, there's people, there's organizations that time and time again can at least start the process because it will affect your relationships. It will affect your, your romantic relationships. It will affect your I'm business you relationships. Sa- I'm glad you said that, Brian, because just, you know, y'all, me and my statistics today, every 107 seconds another American is sexually assaulted. And I'm just saying American because we know how human tra- trafficking yeah. and everything is happening all over the world. Just in the United States of America, 107 seconds, y'all, another American ex- ex- is sexually assaulted. And so when we, you know, as adults are moving into relationships, we need to be – very sensitive because mm-hmm. one in, I mean, you know, men and women are having these situations and, mm-hmm. you know, having that conversation with someone is very difficult because, you know, you want to have a healthy mm-hmm. relationship. Look, parents, talk to your kids. I, I'm not a, I mean, I know. Be aware. That's yeah. the biggest thing. You know, a lot of well, parents. that's why we're having this conversation. A lot of parents now do this thing where they'll run the name of, you know, the person they're dating to see if there's any crimes or anything. But one of the things, this is one of the, one of the things actually that is that is kind of central to some of the other work I do. We actually have to change the legal approach to how we deal with mm-hmm. sex crimes. And I think one of the reasons why we don't, and this is what it is, because men are continuously making the laws. So when men make laws about yeah. crimes that men perpetuate, we're less likely to create laws. They, they're not only Thank making you, the laws. Brian. They're not only Thank making. You, the, but, but here's Turner. the thing: in all laws, they're not making the laws for themselves. They're making them for their brothers, their cousins, their right. children, right. grandchildren, peers, right. and so on and so right. forth. So they're making the law saying, "Look, I know I would not do this to somebody, mm-hmm. but I know my partner well, over there. I know how he. <laughs> right. I know, I know how he wrote. Yeah, right. And so I think we we're gonna have to. So even just right now within the legal system. There's really supposed to be a tiering of sex offenders, right? It's supposed to be if you're considered a violent, nonviolent, if it's like an acquaintance crime or something like that. We're supposed to be able to tier persons who've been convicted of these crimes. But our system continues to perpetuate crimes against those persons. So it does matter if someone has been convicted of a sex crime, rape. They come home, and it, let's not even say rape. Let's say kind of as Uche has done. Let's bring it to a small level. Let's say it is that 19-year-old guy and his girlfriend was 16, or he's 19 or 20, and she tells him, well, I'm 18. Well, the whole legal system says, well, it doesn't matter the situation. And we, we know this. If you look it up, many of those situations, the young lady will even admit, this was my boyfriend. We were in a relationship. I don't want to do this. But something happened. Either a parent mm-hmm. got upset or some situation mm-hmm. creates the legal issue now. And there's no reprieve or reprieve for that young man who says, look, I thought she was old enough. She told me she was. Oh, we were in a relationship. So that young man now has to live with a 10, 15-year sentence of mm. registering as a sex offender. You're absolutely right. He's now marked, and this is for white or black men or Latino or Asian men. It, this crime is not just for white men or black men or poor people because the span of sex offenders is, is wide. But we don't even talk about how we would legally deal with these issues. So now we're punishing people who honestly can come out of jail and say, look, man, what I did was wrong, and I actually want to stop this from happening again. And we don't even let them stand against it. Right. 
Well, we want to close the show and just we want to have this conversation, open people's minds to living differently in the world. We want you to have these conversations with your children because, you know, a lot of children are going off to college. A lot of, you know, young boys and girls really need to have these conversations and be comfortable that if something happens to them, they can come to you. Open that line of communication, y'all. Mitigate your circumstances. That is the good life. And if you need help, there is a national um, there is a national sexual assault telephone hotline. It is 800-656-HOPE. 800-656-HOPE. That's 4673. 800-656-4673 because that's a good life. And all you fathers out there, if the other helpline is, is G-L-O-C-K. If you have any offenses by any daughters, turn the Glock. You are crazy. I did not say that. I, I did not it. back that up. But you know what? Let's open our minds to the living differently in the world. Let's create a relationship with you know our faith, and let's move forward You know, so we can all live a good life, too. I'll see you all tomorrow. I'm out. Thank you.